Hey peeps, welcome back. We are talking The Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 14, episode 13, which was the season finale. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. I really hate to say it, you guys, but I am really glad that this was the finale. And the ending felt like an ending. Did it feel like an ending to anybody else? It felt as if this is a good stopping point where they could reboot the show and, you know, bring out something different. I did see that on Andy's radio show, he did say that it's looking like they're possibly going to do a full reboot the way they did New York. But then again, he says it is possible that one or two of the current girls could actually be coming back. So I have no idea what's going on, but it felt like a good time to just say goodbye. Also, you guys, I wanted to tell you up front, I am probably going to be all over the place because this episode was crazy. So if all of a sudden I jump to a whole nother situation, you know, just bear with you, girl, okay? And by the way, I did want to just shout out to all of the peeps. I appreciate every last one of you guys. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Thank you for jumping into the comments. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for all of you that have subscribed. For those of you who haven't, please subscribe to my channel. It's free. All right, you guys. So let's get into the show. So at the top of the show, Jen Fessler stopped by Marge's house and Marge was really proud of herself. She was smiling and excited to tell Jen about her funeral wreath. And, you know, she thought that that was so cute. I thought that it was really tacky and a waste of money. Um, Jen tells her that she didn't think it was that great either. She thought that it was kind of rude and disturbing, you know, to do that. She thinks that this was cute. At the beginning of your time on this show, you got a beautiful reef and did a whole thing with Teresa. This was just terrible. They were over there talking about her and she needed to be involved in some way. However, she was really giving Jackie the blues. She was talking about how Jackie is such a hypocrite, how, you know, Jackie went over to that event to talk bad about her. And I thought to myself, why would Jackie support you? Why would Jackie even consider your feelings after you shared her text messages with Dolores? I thought, aren't you a hypocrite as well? How can you say that Jackie is such a hypocrite, but you aren't? You know, it, it makes no sense. We have seen on multiple occasions this season where Marge has talked down to Jackie like she's her mother and Jackie is, you know, 12. It's not right you do some of the same things that you are always complaining about other people doing. The same way Teresa does a lot of things that she complains about other people doing. I don't understand how these ladies can get so upset, so indignant and just so enraged and just outraged about things that they do to people all the time. It seems to me that as long as they are doing it, it's okay. But as soon as the rabbit's got the gun, it's a problem. It's a foul. How dare you? I never. Yes, you do. All the time. You just hate it that it's now that it's being done to you. So during this time, Dolores stops by to visit. And of course, she wants to let Marge know what happened. When she gets there, Marge tells her, you know, Jackie is dead to her. And I said, was well, Dolores dead to you? Because she was over there too. You know, absolutely not, of course not. Dolores goes ahead and explains the situation to her. And she says, you know, Teresa believes that you have collaborated and you have egged on this woman by reaching out to the ex. And Marge was absolutely telling lies. And I love it because production edited in some of the lies that Marge was telling. Marge was sitting there lying to Dolores, telling Dolores that she never reached out to Louis's ex until after the situation went down in New York or until after Louis allegedly called her son's job or hired Bo Doodle or D Diddle Biddle, Bo, Bo somebody. I, Bo Diddle, 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 Diddle. Oh, who knows? Damn it, you guys know who I'm talking about, Doodle. Anyway, let's just move on. I don't know the damn man's name. 
Dolores does tell her, she said, I don't think that was a good idea. I don't think that you were right for reaching out to that lady. And I said, well, you know, it's not right for any of them to go digging. And they always do. And I don't know if they do it just because they're on the housewives or if this is something that they would do to their friends who are not a part of the show. And if I was one of their friends who was not on the show, after seeing their behavior on the show, and they would be suspect to me and I would be very limited in the information that I would share with them. After seeing Marge share Jackie's text messages, I would never text her anything that was suspicious or odd or rude or out of the way in any way. I would never text her anything that she could twist and change up the context. No ma'am, all of our conversations are verbally face to face and I might have to pat you to hell down before we start to talk. Anyway. Marge tells Dolores, you know, the ex was just validating some stuff for her. And, you know, I think it's horrible. You didn't need to reach out to that person's ex at all. Nobody really needed to do that. But at the same time, you can't be mad 100% because Teresa and Jennifer do it too. So Marge is saying that it's so horrible that Teresa would get these girls together for a summit just so they could talk bad about me. And, you know, Dolores brings it up and I was screaming at the TV at the same time. I said, wait a minute, every season, don't you and all the girls minus Teresa get together to have a powwow so you can talk about how you can drag the dog shit out of Teresa? Isn't that the same thing? And Marge didn't think it was the same thing. And Dolores makes this comment, thank you so much for not inviting me to that. And Marge says that she did. Dolores loses her shit. And I don't think that I've seen Dolores act a fool like this since the last time she told Danielle Staub that she was a scumbag and she started screaming, welcome back scumbag. I, I said, oh shit, Dolores from Patterson is acting a fool over here at Marge's house and, and I'm here for it. Is that called a summit? Well, thanks for not inviting me to that we one. We did. I told you to come. I never, you f***ing lying f What? You f***ing never said that to me. Are you, you calling me you a lying me to this house the night before the reunion? I told you two days before. I said everyone's coming over, but I'm sure you don't want to come. And you go, I don't want to do that sh You f***ing never had that Dolores, conversation with me. Dolores, we your conversation. Liar. Liar. Dolores. Liar. It wasn't even a s liar. conversation. I never had it. What do you mean? You never to it. Because that's a it's a serious thing to me that you're telling me you said something you did it honey now listen dolores says because you are lying that is why she was acting the hell up i said lord you are in this woman's house she was losing it i appreciate dolores for calling her out for lying um i believe dolores in this situation Dolores said that this is Marge's way of trying to make her look like a bad friend to Teresa and trying to act as if Dolores is lying and she doesn't appreciate her character being called into question. Deedle, that's the man's name, Deedle. Oh my God, why the hell did that pop in my head? But that's his name, I think, Bo Deedle. Is it Bob Deedle? Forget it, forget it. One thing that I was a little shocked by is you know, Dolores called Margaret the see you next Tuesday. She told her, you lying, see you next Tuesday. I said, oh no, what? I hate that word, I really do. And there's no way in hell that you gonna sit in my house and call me the see you next Tuesday. I don't condone violence, but I'm liable to whoop your ass. The least I would do is grab you by your damn arm and throw you the hell out of my house. You are not gonna do that. However, Marge seemed like she didn't really want them problems. She didn't want any of these issues with Dolores and Jennifer Fessler, she seemed really uncomfortable. In the end, they both apologized Apologized. You know, at one point, Dolores had jumped up and said, I need to leave your house. You know, because I think Dolores might have popped her. The way she jumped up off that couch and was in Marge's face, I said, oh gosh, this is getting too close. Anyway, they ended up hugging it out and just chopping it up as a miscommunication. However, in Dolores' confessional, she said that Marge is absolutely lying and her timeline is all over the place. And I think that that's absolute facts. Marge is a liar. I was a little shocked that, you know, her little tiny, adorable dog, Bella, she slept through all of that screaming and hollering. She must be used to that with Marge and Joe. You know, I don't know that for fact, but I would assume. But you know what else I thought was funny? That in the middle of all that, Marge all of a sudden became the victim. She says, I'm going to cry. 
She's never called me a liar before. Girl, shut up. Cry all you want. Nobody gives a damn. So Melissa and Danielle go over to Rachel's house. Danielle sits down and, you know, explains to them what happened at Charisse's house because of course you know that is what Melissa wanted to know because, you know, Melissa, she's so sick of Teresa. She don't want to talk about Teresa. She don't want to be a part about Teresa. Don't ask her about Teresa, but she has spent the entire season um, talking about Teresa. Anyway, Danielle explains to them everything that went on. She made a comment that Gia was there. And then Melissa says, oh yes, because Teresa needs backup. And I just thought to myself, what is with this negative behavior that Melissa has against Gia? Gia is a grown up now. She is a college graduate. She is working a job. She is studying for the LSATs. Like she is really a grown up now. If she's living at the house and her mom's having people over, she's allowed to sit at the grown folks table. What the hell is her problem? Every time Melissa gets so worked up over Gia being involved, is Melissa jealous of Gia for some reason? What the hell is this about? Melissa does say that Louis ex and a whole lot of other people in Louis lives have reached out to almost all the girls on the other side, the ones that are not friends with Teresa. And she said at one point she was out at the shore and Louis niece from his first wife walked up to her and told her to please be careful and be afraid of Louis. And you know what? I believe her. I think that something is definitely off with Louis. So Danielle goes on to tell them that Teresa is down to 90 pounds soaking wet and she is completely stressed out. The children are stressed out. Rachel makes some kind of negative comment talking about, well, she's on the Ozempic. Rachel looks like she's about 90 pounds soaking wet as well. Are you on the Ozempic? You can look at Teresa and tell that that is stress weight loss. That is not Ozempic wet weight loss looking in her face when she was at her house at the table talking to all the girls and her attorney James was there, you could see that that's not Ozempic. That's definitely something else. So they asked about Dolores's dinner. You know, they asked Danielle, when you get to the dinner, are you going to make up with Jen? And she says, yes, I was a really good friend to her. I listened to her. I was there for her. I was empathetic. I think that I'm a better friend to her than Teresa. So, you know, she makes it seem like she really wants to be friends with Jennifer. They leave Rachel's house and we go over to Danielle's house and her and her husband and her kids, they're carving pumpkins and you know, having a good time, getting ready for Halloween, stuff that families do. And you know, I'm done with Danielle and this storyline with her daddy. First season, it was all oh, my brother, my brother, my brother. And we saw her daddy and her mom at her house. They were a family. Now here it is her second season and she's not talking to her dad. This sounds like a storyline and I, I really don't give a damn. Anyway, she finally decides to text him. She sends him a text message asking how he's doing, saying hello. And he responds back to her, telling her that all is well, that he, you know, is very proud of her. I think that's great. I hope the very best for her and her, her brother and her dad. Family is everything. Figure out a way to make this work. So she asks Nate, did he get invited to Joey and Louie's parties? And he said, yes, he was invited to both of them. However, he had to work. If he didn't have to work, he would have went to Louie's house versus going to Joey's. And I said, oh, that's really nice. It's an interesting choice as well. After seeing those events, even though I don't like Joe, I would have rather had gone to Joe's event. Well, I thought it was weird that she said that she wanted to try to talk to Jen. She wanted to try to work things out, but she sat down there and she talked bad about Jen with her husband. He says that there's not a bad bone in Bill's body. And she says, well, I don't think that that's true because he's with her. And I thought to myself, well, why do you wanna be friends with her if you truly think that she's this horrible person? Nate makes this comment that says, that's why he sleeps in the pool house and works 100 hours a week. And I thought, don't do this. Don't talk like that in front of the kids. You know, I just thought it was weird that they would have this conversation bad mouthing Jennifer and Bill in front of the kids, but she didn't want to say, I text my dad in front of the kids. I'm disgusted with Louie. I'm disgusted with Teresa also, which is really, I mean, I've already said to you guys so many times, I have always been a huge Teresa fan. And, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to open my eyes all the way up and see her for some of the bullshit 
but when I see it, I try to call it out. Um, Louis sitting there talking to Teresa and saying that he hopes Marge suffers. He hopes Marge's son suffers. That was disgusting. And I thought to myself, who, who wishes bad on people? I have never in my life sat around and wished bad on anybody, not even my enemy. You know what I mean? I've never wished bad on anybody. And I think one of the reasons I never wish bad on people is because I don't want bad to come to me. And I always thought, you know, if you sit around hoping that bad things happen to other people, bad things will probably happen to you. But what I really didn't like is you wished bad on Marge's son. Marge's son has not done anything to you. Marge's son is not a part of this show. Now, one thing is for sure, we always say don't mess with the children. Sometimes the children grow up, they're adults and they're part of the show and they say a bunch of bullshit, they talk to you crazy. And when that happens, I'm like, oh, okay, they are part of the show, they're grown, they're talking shit, they're getting involved in grown people's business, have at it. What I was also pissed off is Teresa sat right there and she did not stop him at all. She didn't say, oh gosh, you know, don't wish bad, especially on Marge's son. If she would have been at home and she seen a scene with Marge and her Joe sitting in their bedroom and Marge's Joe or even Marge says she wished that Teresa and her children suffered, Teresa would lose her shit. I thought that was disgusting and that shows who the hell Louie really is. I truly believe in my heart that Louie is a loose cannon who is ruining this woman's life. And did you also notice that in the original previews for the whole season, it showed some scenes where Louis was allegedly supposedly had stolen or taken Teresa's money. None of that was in this season. All of that footage that we saw was not in the season. What was the story behind all of that? I also believe that if Louis was not in Teresa's life, by now, Teresa and Joe and Melissa would have probably built some sort of bridge. No, they probably wouldn't be the best of friends. They wouldn't be close, close, but they would be close enough to be cordial. I really think that Louis is, is the main problem. And I do realize that Louis is upset with Marge, but no, sir, watch your mouth. That was disgusting. Not only that, when Teresa says, I'm not really a strategic person, Louis chuckled and then said yes. To me, that seems as if he was putting her down. Did anybody think that? To me, it seems that he's always questioning her intelligence. I don't like this man. I think he's a horrible person. So Marge is at home, you know, getting her arsenal together. She's ready to pull out all her text messages. She told Joe that she's about to let Ma uh, Jackie have it down at the dinner. I said, oh God, what is she about to do? Show the girls all the text messages between her and Jackie? Is she gonna pull up like four years of text messages? And when they showed that little flashback of Teresa's parents, I am not gonna lie, I got really teary-eyed. Her parents were so sweet and the family was so much better when her parents were around. And I think that her parents would be devastated to see the state of, of their children's relationship right now. So what I did appreciate is Melissa talked to Joe a little bit about the situation with Teresa after Danielle told her that Teresa wasn't doing good and that the girls were stressed out and she was a little worried about the girls and Teresa. And I said, that shows that Melissa does still have a heart. She cares. You know, Joe makes some kind of comment that he doesn't really believe it because if Teresa and the kids were really stressed out, she would never tell anybody. I said, Joe, soften your heart a little bit. It's your sister, come on. Um, what I also liked is Melissa did ask Joe about going into this dinner. Did he want her to try to build some sort of bridge? Did he want her to put out a little bit of an olive branch? Because if he did, she's willing to do that. And I absolutely loved that. I love that she was there to offer him that option where she could actually start trying, you know, without him being there, just her and Teresa. And he said no. 
and I wanted him to say yes so bad, but I was thinking to myself, he's on national TV, he is angry, he is upset, Charisse is on national TV, she's angry, she's upset, they have done and said some really terrible things. At this moment, he is not going to say yes. And I don't care what he said on Watch What Happens Live about tearing up that card and throwing it in the fire, I absolutely believe that he does regret not opening that card. They get to the Rail Steakhouse. That place is really pretty. I, I'd like to go there, have a little lunch or something. Anyway, most of the girls showed up in all black. I personally would have also shown up in all black, but I would have shown up in all black with tennis shoes, jeans, no earrings, and a ponytail. Because in these events, you never know what's gonna happen. And you know, usually there's some kind of violence and I wanna be prepared for all violence. So I'm just saying, I, I, I don't condone it, but I want to be prepared for it. And these women don't know how to just be classy anyway. So Jen Fessler, Jen Aiden, and Melissa were the only ones that showed up without having black on. Um, Teresa showed up. She was the last one to arrive. Melissa had to roll her eyes. You know she was jealous because Teresa had the spotlight. She was the last one to step in the building. Okay, Melissa. She was first. Anyway, Teresa had on black and white. When Teresa got there, I thought she did a little too damn much. She didn't want to sit across from Marge. First of all, the place seatings, they all had their own like little bouquet of flowers and it, it had, it's, it's like a little planter kind of. You could tell I'm not floral or earthy. I do like flowers though and I, my son sends me flowers all the time and sometimes he just stops by to give his mama flowers and they're always so pretty but I you know I don't know they weren't quite a vase it was a nice little planter thing and it had the name on it it was beautiful so that lets you know where your seat was and Dolores decided to sit each person that was having a conflict you know Teresa would have needed several several seats anyway um, right across from the person so that they could talk and you know look each other in the eye when they had the discussion. Teresa gets in there, I'm not sitting across from her, I'm not sitting across from her, I'm not sitting across from her. I said, really? And then she made some kind of comment that if she sits across from Marge, she would you know throw all of her food on Marge. And I said, lady, grow the fuck up. Okay, first of all. Second of all, everybody else who had issues with people, they came right in and sat down. Why couldn't you just come in and sit down? There's no reason for you to show all your cards at once. When you walked in, you should have smiled, said hello as a group, and then sat down. Okay, I would have sat down and let's get this thing going. By the way, can somebody get me some fried pickles? I'm just saying. Anyway, Jen and Danielle. You're letting you know. everybody for free because you can't it's afford things. I get it. it. Who completely disappointed me you as a friend. You treat people like sh I feel so Just sorry like, listen, for you. You want my I life. I get it. Man. You get to my house, this is what I want. Oh my God, oh, I want nothing that you have. You have 18 up. bathrooms, your yeah. house is empty. Empty, empty. filled with I love, want baby. enough. For people who don't talk to their family, they I need to find family and their friends. You are you know, sad, please, and I know I'm you cry. Sad. I know of you cry alone cry at home. Because listen, oh, cry you couldn't even home? touch what I have with a 10 foot pole. You're so and that's irrelevant. I'm laughing at you. A, you're a clown. You know what? I know. You're I go right. home, and my husband is waiting Wonderful. for me at the door. Husband Your husband with the boobs, boobs, and you got the broad, honey. Oh, oh, my God. 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 Cut it out. Cut it out. You're the queen of this. Come on. You animal. They learn from the best white trash. Poor, poor. When we talk about husbands, it's the most sensitive. Don't everyone. start none, won't be none, Melissa. That she's sitting there talking about me crying alone at night at home. She shouldn't have thrown anything. Thank she you, shouldn't Margaret. have thrown anything. Right, so Bravo ticked me off because when Danielle jumped up, she threw a real glass pitcher, like a glass water pitcher, at Jennifer. When they came back from commercial or whatever that breakup was, all you could see was the glass on the floor. They edited out Danielle throwing this heavy glass pitcher at Jennifer. First of all, if I'm at this table and I'm close to Jennifer, 
even though I don't condone violence, Danielle might get these hands because you just threw this glass pitcher. This pitcher could have hit anybody. The glass shattered and splattered everywhere. You could put somebody's eye out. Now, all of a sudden, I'm thinking about the Christmas story. Anyway, the point is, is, you know, the mom is coming out in me. You don't do that. Now, shit, I would just like to say they were at each other's throats and, you know, Danielle went low. Jennifer went to hell. You know, I don't know why Danielle doesn't realize that Jennifer goes absolutely to the lowest point she can go. Now, first of all, I was pissed off at Jennifer because Danielle starts off the conversation and Danielle is trying to speak calm. She's trying to speak, you know, rationally and she wants to be clear. I think she was truly coming in there to try to say, this really shocked her that they are arguing, that she really liked her, that they were friends. Jen starts off being rude. She starts off popping off at Danielle. And I'm thinking, would you just sit there and shut up? Just shut up for a few minutes and allow Danielle to say what the hell she has to say. And when Danielle finishes, if she has popped off and said some smart shit to you, then you go ahead and, you know, wrap this shit up. But otherwise, can you allow the woman to say what she's saying? But she didn't get a chance to. Jennifer gets smart. And when Jennifer starts getting smart, then the next thing you know, Danielle wants to bring up the fact that she lives in this big, gigantic house with 18 damn bathrooms. I thought she had 16. Anyway, the 18 damn bathrooms and the house is all damn empty and your husband don't want to come home. You're just pitiful. You're lonely. She shouldn't have done that. When you started bringing up her home life and her husband, that opened the door for her to talk shit about your husband. And I don't like that she talks shit about her husband because I think Nate is a really nice dude. But at the same time, no ma'am, you can't get mad that she said your husband have man boobs, jump up and throw a damn water pitcher at this woman because she said your husband has man boobs. When you said that her husband doesn't come home because he don't want to be dealing with her, that she's sitting in this big ass 18 bathroom empty damn house with no love in it. She didn't get up and throw the pitcher at you. That was not okay. I cannot feel sorry for her. You should not have brought up her husband and her home life. If you didn't want her to bring up your husband in your life, Jen tells her that she knows that she's jealous of her. She wants everything that Jen has. And you know, Jen's house is everything and Danielle's house is not, which I think is bullshit. I think that Jen's house is nice and everything, but Jen's house is not my favorite house on the show. As a matter of fact, if you ask me whose house was the best on the show, it ain't none of the housewives. It's Paul's condo. God, I love Paulie's condo. But if I had to pick between Jen's house and Danielle's, I would take Danielle's house. I don't need 16, 18 damn bathrooms. Danielle's house is big enough. It's beautiful. It's cozy. It's perfect. So I don't think that's it. I think that Danielle has a good husband. She's got a good uh, family with her and her husband and her children. I don't think that Danielle is jealous of Jennifer's lifestyle. Do I think that Danielle would like to have a little more money? Yes, but who doesn't? I'd like to have a little more money. You know what I mean? But I don't think that Danielle is jealous of Jen at all. Danielle really thought that she was going to be able to come in there, shit talk Jen's marriage. She thought that she was about to embarrass the hell out of Jen, but Jen said, no, ma'am. You want to talk shit? I'll talk shit. Let's talk your husband. Let's talk these man boobs. I think that it was really shitty, though, that they cut that scene. We had already found out about it. The people at Rails had already dropped that note. I think there was even some kind of cell phone footage or something. Some of the housewives had already alluded to the fact that there was a picture thrown. So I have no idea why Bravo decided to cut it out. You guys get down in the comments. Whose side are you on regarding this particular incident at this dinner? Danielle or Jennifer? I really did feel a little bit bad for Danielle when she went to the bathroom and she was crying and everything. I'm really sorry that she had her feelings hurt, but you risked it. You jumped in and said stuff about her husband. You should have kept it focused right there on you and Jennifer, you and her. Don't bring in the husbands. And that's the thing though, people don't like it when you talk about their husbands, but my opinion is this, if your husband is on the show and your husband is talking that shit, I'm talking about your husband. However, Nate is a good dude. He wasn't doing anything. 
but you brought up Bill. So that opened the door to talk shit about Nate. I really hate that. I really do believe in all honesty, children and husbands should be off limits as well as businesses. But if the husband is in the mix and you brought him up, let's talk about the husbands. In my Kim Richards voice, you don't wanna talk about the husbands. I'm just saying. One thing I can say that Danielle was right about, Jennifer and her husband may have a whole lot of money, but Jennifer is alone a lot. And at least Danielle is home with her husband and her kids. I'm just saying. One thing I also would say, Danielle and Jen would make really good friends if they could get over whatever the hell this is. All right, so we get into this arguing with Teresa and Marge. Teresa is claiming that Marge is the one who's been talking to the ex. She um, says Marge is the one who is leaking all these videos. In the middle of all of this, also, when Danielle and, you know, and Jennifer were arguing and then Teresa was trying to block Jen and everything um, and screaming at Danielle, why are you doing this? Don't do this, don't do this. Melissa decides to get involved and I guess she gets involved because Melissa didn't have anything going on. Absolutely nothing. She was just sitting at the table looking cute. But she stands up and she was like, what? You disagree, white trash. And then Teresa was like, you whore. And then she just, I said, what the hell? First of all, you came into this saying that you weren't gonna talk to Teresa at all. Teresa came into this saying she wasn't gonna talk to you at all. And I truly believe that she wasn't gonna talk to Melissa at all if Melissa hadn't screamed that she was white trash across the damn table. Sit down, Melissa, shut the hell on up. And Teresa, stop calling this woman a whore. Even if you think she is a whore, she's married to your brother and she's got children with your brother, your niece and your nephews. Don't be on TV, niece and nephews, mom a whore. I mean, shit, she be on there talking shit about you. She just called you white trash, which is another thing. Melissa, why are you calling her white trash? She's got kids too. They, both of them make me sick. Anyway, both of them hypocrites, shit. Jen Fessler leaves. She said that you guys are absolutely used to this level of disgusting and embarrassment. I'm the fuck out of here. Okay, now listen, <laughs> I wish that Jen Fessler could have stuck around. Listen, if you really want to be a full-time housewife, you got to be here for the shit. You know what I mean? When the when they go low, you don't have to go low too, but you do need to know when the duck. Go back in the corner a little bit. Wait till the dust settles and then come back to the table. Don't walk away. That was ridiculous. Anyway... Dolores says she understands that Jen is not comfortable. So that's why she left. Marge then really upsets Dolores because she proves that she's a liar. She backtracks and tells Teresa that she didn't start talking to Louis' ex until 2021. Dolores said, wait a minute now. You said that you didn't start talking to Louis' ex until after New York or until Bo Diddle, Diddle. Bob did anyway shit until the doodle um reached out you know it started this investigation however what I didn't like is Dolores knew that Marge was sitting at that table telling a bold-faced lie and Dolores did not jump in and say foul you're lying you know that's what Dolores should have had she should have had a whistle you know as soon as she heard a lie she should have blew that damn whistle no matter who it was that was lying Anyway, she would have been blowing that damn whistle the whole time. She would have been out of breath and needing a damn inhaler by the end of this shit. So we find out that Marge, you know, she really was working on her arsenal. She says that, you know, just the night before, she had been talking to Louis' ex and she found out. Jackie had at their house. What the are you talking about? In 2021. Are you out of your mind? Yeah. Hey, you had at your house? No, yes, not. she did. Are you out of your 2021, before You're the Gloria video You're came out. And a think, and a think. Liar. Can we let her talk? Think. Margaret, how do you know this information? Okay. I found out last week. Oh, I so told Margaret, her. you're trying to make this about me when it's about you. It was on the heels of her hating you. She befriended her. I did you not. Her I did you not. Jackie, can I say one thing? You. Had you met with the ex before this, before you were friends? No, did they, they obviously? No, 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 she's just asking if you you've had her at your house. No. Admit that if it's true, yeah. because Jackie, I'm sure there's I'll proof. Yeah.
We hated each other. Mm -hmm. You went after my husband. And, and I was scared to tell you because I didn't want to this up. But you know what? I'm glad that you know because I was always nervous that you were going to find out. And I realized and it wasn't quickly, me. shut the f up. Everything that came out was from her. Shut up. No, you let it come on me. You're a f Get the f out of here. You're a little snake. Her. But you still like to You're invite her to your home. Lawyer. Shut up. You're a f***ing lawyer and you know how to do it all. She leaked s***. But we asked you point blank if you were aware. And I said no. Wow. You're the one that got subpoenaed. You subpoenaed the wrong bitch. Wow, honey. Jackie just admitted something to you. Are you okay with that? Yes, I'm fine with it. Because because she wasn't bringing it. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We're not over the sprinkle cookies, but that's okay. Now, honey, listen. I thought that this was absolutely crazy. First of all, Jackie, what the fuck? I totally didn't see that coming. Totally did not see that coming. I said to myself, if that had been me, and I knew that we were going to have this sit down, and I knew that we were dealing with Jackie, and I knew that I had been talking to Louis' ex, there is no way that I would have got there with Teresa not knowing already. There is no way that I would allow Marge to out me. I would have been told Teresa from the jump. When we first decided that we were gonna try to work on our friendship, I would have set Teresa down and said, hey girl, let's just go ahead and clear the table. Let's clear the deck all the way. When you were digging in my marriage, when you were embarrassing the shit out of me and Evan, when you were going around town, spreading this rumor that my husband was cheating, I was mad as hell. So let me let you know what I did. I called up Louie's ex and told her to come on down like the damn price is right. Come on over to my house. Let's have a little charcuterie board and tell me everything you know about Louie. I would have told her all of that up front. Now, what I was upset about is when Charissa found out, instead of holding Jackie accountable, she says, well, I understand. She did that because I was going after Evan. And that's cool. It really is. But I still would have let Jackie have it because first of all, you just came over to my house the other day when I had the lawyer over there. We asked you, was Marge talking to the ex? And you said you didn't know anything. Right then was a good time for you to just go and out yourself. You could have said it right then. You know, Marge has been talking to the ex, but I did too. I, you know, invited her over to my place. It was a while back. You know, you could have said that then, but you didn't, you lied. Not only that, there was other opportunities that you had that you could have told her. So I would have definitely unleashed on her ass at that moment. Melissa did say something that I thought was really good. Melissa said, so you're just gonna walk over the fact that Jackie had the ex over to her house and she was collecting information, but you're still mad at me about the damn sprinkle cookies. And you know, that is the truth. Teresa brings up them damn sprinkle cookies any chance she gets. Why is Mar, you know, why is Jackie getting the pass? Rachel also said something that I agreed with, which I regularly, rarely, rarely agree with Rachel. Anyway, Teresa says that Rachel and her husband thought that Louie had reached out to his ex because Marge told them that lie. Rachel said, no, to be honest, she said, Marge didn't tell us that. Someone else told us and that person doesn't even know Marge. And she says, is it possible that Louie does some things and doesn't share this information with you? And I thought that when Rachel said that, she wasn't saying it to be rude. Her, she was calm, she was polite. She said, maybe it's some things that Louis says and does that he doesn't tell you about. Teresa gets way upset and starts screaming at her about John Fuda. Then Rachel tells her, you keep my husband's name out your mouth. And Teresa says something that's absolutely valid. You and your husband keep me and my husband's names out of your mouth. And then we'll stop talking about you, which is all true. Rachel then tells Teresa to shut her big hot dog lips up. And I said, Rachel, somebody slide Rachel a mirror because you have the matching lips. You have your nerve to talk about Teresa's lips when both of y'all clearly see the same physician. Shut the hell up over there. Now, when Jackie decides that she's finally going to admit the truth, I said, this is real crazy. Jackie, seriously? She sits over there quietly whispering to Teresa, 
yes, I did. I, you know, but she turns around and tells Melissa and Rachel to shut the fuck up real quick. I said, okay, Jackie, this is nuts. Marge tries to say that Jackie must have put the video out. I don't quite believe that. One thing is for sure, Jackie does have some balls. I mean, she turned around, she looked Teresa dead in the face. She was sitting right there next to Teresa and she admitted what she did. Um, but she also didn't defend herself very well with Marge and the rest of the girls. She actually didn't do much and Marge was able to pull all of the blame on her. And I don't buy it. You know, Marge lied so many times and Marge was really there pulling all this information oh, on the blogs and blah, 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 blah. I don't know if Marge and Jackie were actually in cahoots at this time, but Marge is not 100% innocent. She really isn't. The thing about it is Marge was actually communicating with Louie's ex way before Teresa and Jen reached out to her ex-best friend. And I think that Marge was getting stuff out to the blogs. I really do. Jackie saying that she has no idea how to get stuff out to the blogs. I think she's lying there. But Dolores really got Jackie to tell the truth. Or was it Melissa? One of them told her, you need to tell the truth because I'm sure there's proof out there if you really did have that lady over. And then that's when she finally told the truth. Before that, she was adamantly trying to deny it. But I was still a little bit pissed with Dolores that she didn't actually come out and say, Marge, you're lying about this timeline. You've been talking to Louie's ex for a very long time. And even in her confessional, she admitted that she is still talking to Louie's ex. Filling that lady in on everything that's going on as they're taping throughout the season. And that lady is filling her in on information as well. In the comment that Jackie needed a diaper when she got to her car, I think so too. I think Jackie was scared when she was walking out to her car. She was walking real slow, peeking around the corner. And when she realized the girls were standing there, she backed up because she didn't want to have to face them. She did not want to face the wrath of Marge. However, this does not, in my opinion, this does not get Marge off. Marge is guilty as hell. And so is Jackie. And I think that Jackie definitely didn't handle this right. And Teresa, I cannot believe that she didn't unleash on Jackie's ass. And not only that, Jackie and Teresa seem to still be friends. They are still flowing and saying that their relationship is real and solid. Jackie just did that shit because she was really humiliated. She was really humiliated. She was crying. She was devastated over that rumor about Evan. But I bet you that Marge egged this whole thing on. Marge was a part of this. That's just my opinion. And I think that Jackie was going to continue to lie until one of those girls said, if this is true, the truth is going to come out. There will be proof. And then she just couldn't hold it any longer. That's why I would have told Teresa earlier. But I will never stop being shocked that Teresa gave her a pass instantly. I understand why, but I don't understand why at the same time, because I still would have unleashed on her. Like, I understand that why you did it, but I don't understand why you didn't tell me if we are working on this friendship. However, we know that Teresa was just trying to use Jackie anyway so that she could get information on Marge. Oh God, what kind of friend group is this? I wouldn't want to be friends with any of those girls, except for maybe Jen Fessler. Anyway, get down in the comments, you guys. Let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.